Hey guys, Clueless Crafts here. And a little birdie tells me you want to see more create this book. And this is only the third episode, but my book is already pretty warped. So I want to see how big it gets when I'm finished with it. All right, so I'm really procrastinating picking a page because that means I actually have to start doing something. Okay, pick a number between one and 10. No, wait, you can't do that. <laughs> All right, paper gods, please give me a good page to do. All right, create quick sketches. Draw something in one minute or less. Repeat, drawing different things each time. Okay, I can do this. Okay, and go. Oh, crap, I didn't even realize what I was going to be drawing. Uh, okay, uh, oh my god, I'm just... Um, octopus, yes, octopus. I guess I should have decided what I wanted to draw before I started the timer, but <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty. But this page was way more pressure than I thought. That one was kind of underwhelming. I think we can do a lot better than that. All right, and for this next one, I wanted to try and draw a haunted house, but the pressure of the clock was definitely getting to me. One minute is not a long time. And I kept trying to figure out like what would be the quickest way to draw it, but figuring it out was slowing me down in the process. Next one, I'd figured I'd have some fun with it, so I made this killer crab. He was going to be normal size, but I couldn't resist putting some stick men into his claws. <laughs> Don't mess with this crab. For this one, I attempted to draw Spongebob. Though he's a lot more detailed than I remember, and by the time I got to his body, his arms and legs just turned into blobs. <laughs> Next up, I tried drawing a face and it immediately turned out bad. So I thought I'd roll with it and just continue making it bad. And this is what I ended up with. And I love pirate ships. So of course I had to add one in here as well. But again, a minute is not enough time. See, that's like a, a hill, a cliff, and that's someone. Oh, someone's on a boat. Oh no, he's going down a cliff. This is the vibe I'm giving off right now. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm finished with this page and I do not know what to think of it. <laughs> what is this page? <laughs> I don't know what I was feeling, but I'm ready to be over with it. <laughs> All right, so we picked randomly so far and I'm kind of missing being in control. So I'm just gonna pick one that I will actually like. Oh, huh. or maybe I'll just do another random one. <laughs> I just landed on this page. Create contrast, think of a pair of opposites, present them together on this page. This is actually a great page because I have an idea for it right off the bat. Let's just get on into it. So for this page, when I saw a contrast, the first thought that came into my head was the drama mask symbol. You know, the theater mask, the comedy and tragedy. Well, I got that idea in my head and I just couldn't think of anything else, so I went with it. Now, all the symbols I found were pretty simple and not a lot of detail. And I wasn't about to just half-ass this page like the last one, so. I figured I'd make the masks more facey looking if that makes sense. Though I think I might have drew them backwards. I think the tragedy is supposed to be on the opposite side, but whatever, it's, it's my symbol. I'll make it how I want it. <laughs> and as I'm drawing this, I have this little voice in my head saying like, oh, it looks terrible. It looks terrible. You're gonna show this to other people and be proud of it. But I think that's like a phase everyone goes through when they draw something. I know that happens to me when I paint because the first layer always looks like crap because you need to put the base layers on and everything. And I often forget you have to do the same thing for drawing. So for half of the time I'm spent drawing, I'm thinking, oh, this is terrible, what a mistake. But this drawing was a good practice to, I guess, exercise positive thinking because I'm sure I'm not the only one who just thinks so negatively of their own artwork as they're drawing it. 
and as I put more details into it, it started to actually look like something, so I started to like it more. Not to be too cheesy or anything, but I feel this comedy, tragedy, drama mask symbol is a great representation of how I feel about my artwork most of the time. You know, I think that's a pretty common feeling among artists, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below if you kind of have a love-hate relationship with your artwork. I'm curious to find out. And once it's done, I just need to cut it to shape, fold it down the middle, and glue it down. All right, our drama masks are done and I'm so happy with how they look. Okay, so for this next one, I wanted to pick it myself and have a little bit more control with the design. So I went with page 162, create an empty setting. I think I have an idea for what I wanna do for this one, but it requires watercolor. And if you saw the last episode, you know that my watercolor paints are crap. Or maybe it was just me. But anyway, I needed new watercolor paints and I happened to pick these up. So let's try these out. All right, before I start with my empty setting, let's fill up our water brush. And now I will admit, I am a moron. I thought it was like one of those turkey baster things where you squeeze it and then it sucks the water up into the compartment. And I tried that for a bit and realized I was an idiot. So I just took my water bottle and poured that everywhere, getting some of it into the brush. So let's close you up and maybe clean up this big puddle of water. Okay, so now we can paint. Get my paint all situated in the right spot, my brush nice and ready, and I'm terrified of ruining it. So let's just start off with some scrap paper. Okay, so I'm just taking this red color and seeing what it looks like on the paper and brush is nice, but oh my gosh, this is not the right paper to be using this with. My dreams are dashed. My heart is broken, but I will move on. I'm just gonna use pencil crayons for this one instead, but I will end up using those watercolor paints, just not on printer paper. Anyway, I'm just drawing out this city skyline I try not to make them all look like basic rectangles, but I mean, that's basically all you see in any city skyline. And once I have the general outline in pencil, I'm going over it with the pen. And this is when I change some of the details a bit, you know, make sure my lines are actually straight, make sure the angles of the building actually make sense. So I ended up changing a lot of the angles because like, you're not looking up and looking down on a building at the same time. so. You know, I'm not a professional. I make as many, if not more mistakes as any one of you. But going over your pencil lines with pen is just so satisfying. Especially when you're not following the pencil lines and it just looks like a mess because you know that when you erase it, it's just gonna look so good after. All right, so all the lines are drawn, all the windows are in. Just gotta let that pen dry and bam, no pencil lines. Now comes the very tedious part of coloring everything in. So I actually had fun with this, especially with all of the glass buildings. I love doing the reflections on it. I was only working with four colors here, so I definitely had to be strategic of which building is which color. Then there's the struggle of coloring around every single window I drew. See, this is why we need to upgrade to like an all glass downtown. It's so that I can draw it easier. <laughs> so with almost all the coloring of the buildings done, I'm looking at the sky and I'm seeing how plain it looks. And just thinking about like shading in a blue sky or adding some clouds just is not appealing to me. And I wanted it to just have this like wow factor. So I thought I'd just add in a mushroom cloud to give it some variety. I mean, having a mushroom cloud in your skyline is not the most normal thing, but 
since when is normal cool? So I just took a long time shading in the sky red and very carefully adding in like 20 different cloud shapes in this mushroom cloud. I almost wish I didn't shade in the sky red because, I don't know, I feel like it takes away a bit from it because it's so roughly shaded in. Like it, it was such a big space of paper to cover with just one color. So it's hard to make it look even if you're just scribbling on some pencil crayon. But once everything was drawn in and I went back to the sky and softened it up a bit and added some background clouds, I think it turned out pretty good. Is it my favorite? No. Do I hate it? No. I mean, my favorite part of the drawings is still the buildings, you know, that's not going to change. But I think the cool background adds to it a bit. But looks like this page is done. Alright, and now that that one's done, I already picked out the next one. So we're going to be doing page 182, create cuts through layers. And it looks like I'll need a magazine for this one. Okay, I found one. It's my CAA magazine. So we have to cut through several layers of the pages and glue what we find on the paper. I'm not sure how much I should cut or what kind of pattern, but I guess I'll just start and see what kind of shapes and colors I end up with. So far, nothing. Let's get these down into usable pieces. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, I have to admit something. When I read this, I really didn't think about actual cutting literal shapes out of a magazine. I just started cutting and didn't think much of it. So I actually ended up cutting some actual shapes out of it, like those squiggles and that circle, before deciding to glue everything on. So I'm sure it didn't end up as nice as it could have, but I tried. Now my vision for this was to create a landscape, like blue skies in the back and mountain ranges on the bottom. So I mean, keep that in mind when you look at it. I know it looks like nothing right now, but hopefully it turns into something. And you can't forget that every page needs a smile. So it turned out perfect that I got this smiling sun. Then it's just filling in the gaps with anything I have left, seeing as how I can't find any more blue pieces. And there's nothing much to it. This page was nice and easy. And I gotta admit, I actually really like how it looks. Very shiny, very colorful. Okay, <laughs> my desk is a bit of a mess right now. But I finally have my pieces cut out on my page. So mountain range and sun with blue skies and bird hunting. Though they never seem to get it. But this one was funner than I thought it'd be. Even though it doesn't look like much. Alright, and this week is a wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you want to see more, just leave a like or a comment down below. But other than that, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye!